Hi everyone, today we have a 2018 15-inch uh, MacBook Pro that does not turn on after liquid spill. So let's go ahead and plug in our charger with USB amp meter and see if we could figure out what's going on with this. Alright, so we have our USB amp meter plugged in. We see the board is taking 5 volts at 2 amps. Now, that does not sound right, does it? To people that are new to this channel, uh, when the when uh, USB-C is at 4 volts, that means the device is not even turning on. Um, 2 amps would be something that we expect from, let's say, you know, charging the battery while the device is on. So let's go ahead and grab our thermal camera and see if we can see anything getting hot then I'll manually show you guys and sure enough there's something lighting up right there. You probably can't see it too well but something is getting to above 240 degrees. Now that is pretty hot and that is not normal for something that uh, is not turning on and if we go over to our microscope view it is really no question what this might be. So here is um, we actually look like looks like we actually have an internal tr some internal trace damage right here. It's kind of hard to see, uh, but that area looks bubbled up. This is where our short is going to be, and that's probably why it's taking so much voltage. But just to show you guys, I'm going to grab a little bit of alcohol, and it actually looks like that component is actually glowing. It's hard to see, but I see a little orange orange tinge there. But could easily see what's what's burning there. So it's either going to be this capacitor or this capacitor and an internal short right there. We know where our problem is, and this whole USB area is just burning hot now. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit and uh, go from there. I hope it's not an internal board short, but if it is, we'll handle it. So this capacitor, I'm pretty sure, can just be knocked off. I don't think anything's really holding that on, which makes me, yep, more suspicious of an internal board short, and I believe we do have one here, right in here. Um, this is probably for audio, so we don't need this. This board is just for data recovery, by the way, so it's important to note that. Um, let's plug it back in and see if we get anything different. And we're still getting that same two amps here, so that means that something right around here is internally shorted. Um, so I'm going to have to get my X-Acto knife and make a little hole right here. It's probably going to be this via. So if I can make a little cut here to this via and get all this out of here, the board should be okay. That's just for microphone. They're probably not going to get microphone back, but the uh, data should be recoverable, and that's at the end goal of uh, what we want. And actually now, our amperage went down quite a bit. Um, it's went up. I mean, it's still not normal, but it went down quite a bit there. So I am going to go ahead and get my X-Acto knives and get started on this. First things first is I need this area to be pretty clean here, so I'm going to clean it up with Q-tip and alcohol. This is going to help us see um, where the short is. I could tell you right where it's at. It's right. It's going to be right in where this via is. If you look closely on this via, you can see it's burned in there. We're going to have to remove that via and everything around it, so let's go ahead. We want to be the least invasive that we can be. So we don't want to cut into a ton of layers if we don't have to. So I am going to just cut here and hope that I don't have to go deeper than I have to. So, And this is in there pretty good. Yeah, that's almost halfway through the PCB. So that's not a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and remove this connector because that's, you're never getting audio or microphone back um, after something like this in that area. That's in there probably to the sixth layer, so almost all the way through the board, so that's not a good thing. All right, that'll give me more room now. Yeah, look at that. That is in there good. Now I could get use a little bit of a bigger blade on this.
Yeah, this is What's directly on the other side of this? Let's see if we see anything off here. Doesn't look like it got fully through, but there's stuff here obviously that we're going to need. Um, so not a good thing. Go ahead and uh, get some more alcohol in here. Flush it out a bit. If I can get all that carbon out of there, I can see where the, the short is. That should be good for now. Right, we've reached the bottom of the short. As you can see, there's no more no more short around it. So now what we have to do is just work on the edges of this area and then hopefully hopefully with any luck our short will be gone and this board will have enough um or whatever that was severed would be non critical. That's our hope here. I think it will be. I think this area is mostly audio. Um, and USB, so USB might give us a hard time. Just going to cut in a circular fashion. And again, you're going to have to keep injecting alcohol in here to keep all that carbon out of your way. So you can see that's the only way you'll see. So it's helpful to have a syringe uh, with alcohol. More alcohol in here. Switch my blade to something a little better. This one's actually worse.
this PCB is just so melted here. I think I might have got it though. Let's see. Let me dry this up. Because a board sitting in water and alcohol obviously is not going to turn on. That's through, I think it, it, yeah, pretty sure it got through six layers. These boards are seven layers, if I recall. So that's, um, yeah, that's something right there for sure. Let's turn it on. And now we get nothing. We get a little flash. So that tells me something. We might have nicked another trace. In that case, it's kind of unavoidable, or there's still a short here. So my next step... Let's see. Yeah, it looks like the layers are still melted together right there. Let's see. Yeah, there's a see it's melted right here. It got so hot that the copper actually melted right there. You could kind of see the the bridging right there. So now it's just a matter of precision and cutting out all of the affected area. Let me change this blade. Maybe I have a sharper blade. I'm going to turn the board now so I can inspect and get the other half. I'm going to have to cut into this way a little bit. reason why I'm cutting here is we cannot get to it because it's like tunneled into the board. So I'm going to cut this ground plane out and layer immediately under it so I can get better access. It's all the way over. What are these capacitors on? Let me see which rail these capacitors are on uh, because that'll tell us what's shorted. I'm going to guess it's going to be directly on DC in, so I'm going to open up my board view here for this particular PCB. It's an 8200141, or 1041, I should say. And these capacitors are going to be on PP bus G3 hot, of course. Same with that one capacitor. 
Okay. So, PP bus really doesn't need all these capacitors. We're going to do without one because all under here is totally destroyed. Just like that. Here we go. See, here's where it looks like it might have been. I don't need these resistors either. These are for the, the microphone. I do not want to go cutting over here because the this is where an empty NAND is. Although it's empty, it probably shares a data line somewhere, and we don't want to sever that data line. Some more alcohol, flush this out. The reason why I'm cutting kind of lengthwise is I want to see each layer so none are shorted together. I want to have a big enough gap between them. I think that's where that short was right there. I think I got it. Clean up around this side now. Lush. What's just amazing is how damaged this PCB was. I mean, this is just absolutely destroyed in this area. Like, the, it's just, it's ruined. And this is the kind of thing about Apple's board design. It's like, this should not happen. Like, you should have protection so this does not happen. This is bad. This is almost like a fire hazard. But it is what it is, I guess. All this junk out of here. Flush again. Then I'm going to dip the edge of the board in the ultrasonic just to clean all that copper and stuff out from the CD3215s if any got washed under there. See, that's looking much better. Um, our first layer is where we have traces. As you can see there, there's a trace. I did not break that trace. So that's a good thing there. Um, Last area is just going to be this right here, just right here, uh, and we're gonna probably going to have to cut more this way, actually. Like that. There we go. We got it. And then right here, 
looks like and a little bit more right here Did my blade just break off in the PCB? Yes, my blade broke off in the PCB. Let's go ahead and switch that. All right, we need a flush again. Then the next area is just this edge here because it's all messy. So we'll cut out this edge here. Looks actually not bad. Here, still shorted, I could see it. And right here, that'll be all right. This, on the other hand, will not be all right. We may have to keep cutting this way because it looks like it extends pretty far. But let me just see if my short is still there. I'm guessing it's going to be. two point three ohms to ground so this is a method that I can use I don't like to use it a lot but I'm going to inject I'm going to inject very low voltage into the board and so like one volt and I'm going to man monitor amp draw when I'm doing this because my amp draw is going to be fairly high and then once I remove that short it's going to drop drastically so I'm going to know when I get it so that's what I'm going to do now because I don't know how far it's going to extend in the board. I don't want to cut further than I have to because remember we are breaking traces as we go. So we want to avoid that. So I am going to inject voltage into PP bus. One volt. Not going to hurt anything if we cross any layers. It's totally fine for the board. Um, and then we will um, go based on that because like I said that amp draw is going to drop drastically once we once we remove our short. Don't go over one volt, don't do 12 volts or anything crazy like that because that you will ruin stuff and that's not, you don't want to ruin stuff obviously. So one lead there, one lead on ground over here. It's not pulling anything. Which is odd. It's pulling very low amperage. Let's maybe our short is gone. Maybe my meter is just giving us a hard time. Or PP bus separated from the rest of the board. This is reading about 230 ohms to ground and over here is the same. So we still have a partial short, um, but it looks like most of it is gone. So that's, this complicates things because a partial short is a lot harder to, 
to resolve than a dead short. It may even be something else. So I'm going to clean this up. Um, I'm just going to rinse the board off real quick and then um, we will keep going, but we need to clean up all this junk right here. All right, our board is rinsed off just with some isopropanol alcohol, so I'm going to dry it now. Okay, so this looks better. I mean, it still does not look great, but it looks a lot better than it did. And we do not have a dead short anymore. It still looks like we're partial short. Um, let me just test again now that the board was dried. And I want to see exactly, I want to actually try two things. I want to see what the resistance to ground is going to be. And, um, all right, so now we're at, 360 ohms and climbing so that's a partial short that's not a full short um, let's see in ohm. so my meter is in continuity mode let's go to ohms mode and see if that reading changes any and no same reading okay let's go ahead and uh, see if we even get any USB communication with our charger because that would be a big deal breaker if we did not because that's would mean that we cut traces we shouldn't have and there's really no coming back from that unless we know exactly where that trace is that we cut so I'm going to plug in our charger here and let's see what we get so alright we improved look at this we have USB communication here uh, 5 volts, 29, 28 mil 20 volts, wow. So we actually get 20 volts. Um, so our short may be gone. Now, I've seen these boards work. All right, so now we're back up to an amp. So where's our, where's our power coming from, or where's our amperage coming from? Let's turn on our FLIR again. And let's see what's getting hot. And it's just a generalized area. It's nothing. It's in the same general area right here. But now I'm wondering, can we get data off of this board? So let me go throw it back in the enclosure and we'll see what we get because um, I've seen these boards work with a partial short to ground. And based on how extensive this is, I believe that there it's half of the PCB. And if we could get the device to boot up like this, we're going to and we're going to pull that data before we continue. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I have the enclosure right here. So I'm just going to slide it in and see what we get. Now it's very, very important on these. You gotta connect a battery no matter what kind of charger you use. I've seen, I've been trolled by this. I've seen people get trolled by this. If you do not connect a battery, it will not work. So we will do so. I don't want anything plugged in, I just want what I need, so what I need is USB-C, I need my screen, no screen connector is corroded, so hopefully the CPU is not dead, as many of you guys know, um, Apple did something very dumb in the board design on this device, and if you have liquid on your screen connector, you will oftentimes kill your, your board. Battery screw. And a T5. So with the current like one volt or so, I mean with the current one amp, I would expect the device to turn on, I would expect the battery to charge slow because the ISL can only output so much. Um, if so, that's a great thing because we can pull that data and that's all we need on this particular device. So the moment of truth, let's see. Charger is plugged in. We're going to use that same port that we did. I get trackpad click. 20 volt, 70 milliamps. 83 and we have a we have fan spin here the, those fans are spinning and look at that that is an Apple logo so that that surprised me um, let's see how much voltage we're pulling like three amps right now so that's kind of high um, we booted wow that's surprising 
So PP bus voltage is 12.73. So it's, it's on the lower side. It's being pulled down. Uh, that's pretty much it for this one. We could pull data, and that's all we need from this.